what's up y'all so in today's video we are going to continue on with our general lock versus lsda series i've placed them all in a convenient playlist we've gone over several items that annexter sent us to check out because we've always sold lsda and I'm gonna put the playlist up here in the corner going over knobs and levers and all this other stuff. But today, we're gonna to go over narrow style mortise locks. That's, that's these things that's used on glass storefront doors in the US. I'm not sure about overseas so much, but uh, narrow style, and, and I'm gonna say style a lot in this video because they're narrow style doors. It's, it's S-T-I-L-E. But they are Adams Wright. The two that we're going to be looking at are Adams Wright style. That's S T Y L E because Adam Wright, Adams Wright came up with, I guess came up with these things. And then of course a bunch of other companies come along and clone them. One of them being LSDA, another one being General Lock, and there's bunches of others honestly. But we've always sold LSDA. We were sent the general locks to look at. I'm also gonna talk about mortise cylinders in this video. That's right, mortise cylinders and cylinder collars that go around that because it all kind of goes together. Might as well knock it out on one video. So we're gonna be a little bit longer in this video, but y'all are used to that. So let's get started with narrow style. And, and again, that's the style, S-T-I-L-E. That's, that's this part of the door that the lock goes in. Adam's right style, that's with a Y because they're they're styled after Adam's right and and whatever. So I decided to do this video. I, in the last video, I mentioned that we were gonna do this padlock uh, next, but we're not because I actually just did a massive unboxing. I'm also gonna post the link up here in the corner. If you didn't see that huge unboxing, I haven't gotten any of this to my vehicle yet. It's just been sitting up here ready to restock the vehicle. So I figured it would be a perfect time to go over Adam's Wright style mortise lock. So we've got the general lock right there. This, this is the deadbolt. So there's three different versions of these things. There is, and, and three different measurements. There's 31 32nd. Now that's kind of an older style that you don't really see. I, I haven't seen a 31 30 second back set, which is just like your back set from the edge of the door to the center of the hole. I hadn't seen one of those in quite a while. Uh, and they're almost never used in new construction. There's inch and an eighth, which is what we're gonna be looking at and is by far the most common. So if you're gonna stock anything as a locksmith, you're gonna wanna stock the inch and an eighth. Uh, those are the dead bolts. Hook bolts, which we see dead bolt, hook bolt, they're the exact same thing. However, hook bolts have a hook, obviously by the name of them, uh, in it. And they're also used on, you know, the sliding doors where you see, yeah, and they come together when you, when you go in and they open up. So these are used often on that because the hook can grab into either the other door or the frame or also sliding windows. Sometimes I've even seen them on drive-throughs where they have an Adams right hook bolt and you close the window and the hook is able to go into it. Uh, and then inch and a half, which is used on the wide style, which is with the eye, that is wider style doors that have a thicker frame on them. So we're gonna take a look at the inch and an eighth dead bolts first. We're gonna set this aside for just a minute and we're gonna go ahead and uh, we do compare box sizes because that's important as a locksmith. You're gonna be riding around with these things and uh, we call it the, the locksmith Jenga, how to, how to stack stuff in your vehicle to keep as much room as possible. So we see the LSDA is, is shorter, general locks wider, they're about the same height. LSDA is a little bit taller. Uh, with the mortise cylinders, we can see one, this is kind of an important thing. I wish LSDA would do this and they've always done. It. So to be able to see stuff in your truck, like I stack it like this in my vehicle when I pull a drawer open, I can see what it is. However, that leaves this top able to flip open like that. So when you open your truck, if it's not packed really well, then you'll, you'll, you, you have a chance of these things just kind of falling open. It would be much better to have the label on top. So that is actually a bonus. However, we'll look at the size difference it is 
uh, it is a bigger box for sure. So it will take up more room in the car. Some people take the take it out, you know, and put them all in one container. I like leaving them in the box just so I see the label and know, like, because LSDAs come two together, so these are key to like. Uh, and if you have a job where you need a double cylinder put in on a glass door somewhere, which, by the way, is against fire code, so a lot of the times what you're going to be selling a lot of is the one-inch thumb turns uh, because a lot of doors are still put in with, number one, crappy cylinders that we're going to go over in the video, which is why it's good to have these to uh, replace them. And number two, they still, for some weird reason, come with key on both sides. Before they're allowed to open, they end up having to switch the thumb turn out. So we're going to talk about all this in the video. I'm going to go ahead and get these unboxed. So let us go ahead and see how these are packaged for shipment. We're going to start off with the general. And uh, we have some directions in here. Let's see. Probably just shows measurements. Yep. Freehand cutting one of these by going by these measurements is never a fun task. So uh, it basically shows you how to unscrew it and, and put it back in. Once you've done a few of these, uh, for the most part, you'll get it down. So let's put those directions back in here. We have four face plates, a pack of screws with two mounting screws, and six face plates, 12, six of each color face plate screws. Kind of weird and the mortise lock body itself. So basically, if you don't know how these work, I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. We see there's this little pivot on the back of your mortise cylinder. What happens is when you turn the key or when you turn the thumb turn, it presses down on this, which pulls it out of kind of its locked notch. And as it does that, it pushes down. Let's see if I can do this without being in the camera. Ah! You push down and it flips out so it's got to it's got to go all the way to catch into this lock notch that's that's how they work you turn the key or you turn the thumb turn 360 degrees and and that's what it does uh, with the face plates here we've got two of each color looks like they are stamped on the face plate in general and We've got a flat face and a round face because a lot of double doors have a have a round so that when they meet they kind of they kind of can touch each other. But two different face plates in each color. Good to have options like that. We opened the LSDA one and uh, and we saw each one of those was in an individual bag. We have no directions there, and we have a pack of screws with six total faceplate screws because we have only two so they only send two faceplates and it is the flat version which is exactly the same as their flat version almost a very minor difference uh, and not stamped as i mentioned and it in its own bag same exact thing if we hold them up together uh, it, it, you glance at it at first and you say, look at that, the font is the same. It's in the exact same place. Are these made in the same factory? Well, there is some differences. There's a cutout open right here. I don't see one on the LSDA. It does not have that cutout. And then there's these two punched in areas that the LSDA does not have. But other than that, they are visually identical and visually identical to even an Adams Wright design. They do rattle. So this one's inch and a half. You can tell when you open, you know, aside from the cylinder being set back, you can always tell when you open the doors because they have these kind of cutouts, these recessed areas compared to it being flush. So if you take your face plate off, and you see this and the set screws are kind of buried down in there. You know you're dealing with an inch and a half. And uh, the one thing I wanted to show real quick was the hook bolt before I totally forget about it. Because by far in the narrow style world, even though these were designed technically for sliding doors with the hook, 
these come on tons of doors and the reason is is because there's a little bit less cutout that you have to do if you hold up a inch and a half or inch and an eighth deadbolt you can see how much longer it is so these have a smaller cutout in their frame uh, and they stick out not as far so even though you see double doors being put in with these i, I hate seeing this because the throw on it is considerably shorter with the hook bolts so this would provide way, way more security than than this would especially when you're talking about a double door that already has a gap in it and that gap may be like this so you only have this little bit uh, very common to see these pried open which is why it's important as a locksmith company to have these in stock but again by far you're going to see less deadbolt and way more hook bolts it's up to you as to whether you want to upgrade the customer but remember you do have to cut out the aluminum frame and on the doors that have the full strip with just two holes in it you may not even see the mounting screws but there's a whole strip that covers the lock you have to take screws off or you have to pop the strip off the door to access the lock when it's time to replace these but aside from being pried open uh, these do fail this where it pushes down they they jam up they get old they get floppy Sometimes they won't even stay in this position and it's usually because this is kind of worn out just from years of use. So again, it's very important as a locksmith company to keep these and a variety of mortar cylinders in stock so that you have them ready to go. It's up to you whether you want to buy the original Adams Wright or one of these clones. I'm just showing you the difference. There is a market out there. There's, there are people out there who, who don't want to pay top dollar for the OEM version and these are perfectly fine to sell as a locksmith. Moving right along to the mortise cylinder. So of course, everybody makes mortise cylinders. Mortise cylinders are used in these locks. Mortise cylinders are used in actual full-size mortise locks. They're used in panic devices. They're used in DTEX alarms, and they're even used in lorry tubular style deadbolts for regular doors. So having a variety of mortise cylinders is important. I don't really go over pricing in any of these general versus LSDA video. That's that's up to you to call and find out if you're a locksmith. Uh, but we'll be talking about retail pricing. So we see the general LS, the general lock comes with two little baggies. Each one came in a baggie. This is an inch and an eighth. Now inch and an eighth is drilled for six pins, and that's if you're using an SC4 or a six pin key and it's chambered for five. Almost all of them are chambered five, six. I don't think any aftermarket, Ilco, GMS, any of those makes or sends out six pin keys. They're all five and uh, you're able to use six in a inch and an eighth. And if you're just using five pin keys in most narrow style applications, one inch is what you're looking for and they send a one inch thumb turn in a bag uh so there's the thumb turn comes with the adam's right cam most inch and an eight cylinders come with a standard cam installed and then they send the adam's right cam with it so you can build up your collection pretty easily of cams just by having a few of these with the LSDA, we'll open it up and we see a cardboard separator, no plastic bags, but we do have a uh, plastic face to kind of protect the finish a little bit. This is a one inch, which wouldn't work for a six pin key, but works just fine. Most, a lot of storefronts just use the five pin variant, so it is not that big of a deal to have to use the five pin when we're placing locks and again the thumb turn it has a little plastic face on it that kind of drives me crazy because peeled off and it like catches around there and then sometimes plastic catches up and and that's just whining for no reason so again same thing when you look at the two thumb turn differences they are different for sure when you call up acme and say i want thumb turns you're going to get this standard thumb turn right here and I'm assuming by these product numbers, MC, I don't know their product numbers well enough, but I'm assuming that if you call them up and say, I want a thumb turn, you're going to get those. So I do like, 
do like that thumb turn a lot better. Looks a lot sleeker. They do make a ADA version of the thumb turn, but sometimes on real narrow style doors, like when the frame's right here, and you try to go and turn it and it just, it hits and it won't work, so. But I do like that one. That one's, that one's nice. That's got some sleek machining on that. And what I guess is stainless steel thumb turn there. Nice, nice thumb turn compared to that. And. And here's another thing about LSDAs, just so you know. Hear that snick? That's got a really strong spring. It's pushing down a ball bearing. And uh, in, I'm sorry, the ball, the spring is underneath the ball bearing in the cylinder. And what happens is it's catching in one of the chamber holes. This is just a regular cylinder with one hole drilled in it for the ball bearing. But I have had on occasion where I failed to put in and lubricate these that after a month or so, people are like, I can't get the thumb turn. The thumb turn freezes up. And then when you come in and lubricate it, it starts working again. So it's something to be aware of. And it's got not, a lot, not as loud of a snick. Now on some doors, that snick is good and bad. It's like a positive stop. What you're wondering what it's there for. Because if you have this in a Adam's right and the, the, the cam is turned down and then on the outside, these do work independently. So it's it doesn't happen as much as it used to. But what happens is if this is like kind of in the, like in this position and then you go and you rotate the other side and lock it and it takes this and it carries it. So if there's any drag here, then it can cause problems with the lock. Again, you don't see that too often. That's kind of a more rare problem but it does happen and that's why it's good to have that positive little snick to it. So let's talk about the locks that come on doors when they're put in new. They're made out of this kind of what, what I call zinc pot crap metal. And the biggest problem with them is number one, they wear out really quickly. Number two, they're very inferior made. See how they, have slots cut all across the top. See, we even have some corrosion beginning there. This is actually even a fairly new lock. And you can see that corrosion starting to happen. That's very typical of uh, cheap metal. So what happens is a, they come along after a few years. This is a Vistawall brand. Actually, it's been around for quite a number of years, but you can't even it, it can you can barely get your key in there and then you got to jiggle 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 these just wear out because of how they're designed if we take apart a couple of the the general and the lsda lock we can see two things actually i'm going to show you one other thing with a new version of that that has a tailpiece but number one since it is a solid brass bodied lock they have machine screws see these little little machine screws and that's because the plug is made out of a better metal if you take apart one of the what i call throwaway locks or the locks that come on the doors and i keep these because uh, number one I, if i get on a job and somebody has say one of these and i'm out there to rekey and this one is just in really bad condition usually i'll just grab a new one and rekey it at no extra charge and give them a whole new lock uh, I will offer if, if it's, in, in, and that's, it depends on the use of the door. If, if the door is really heavily used, then I will say you certainly need to upgrade to new locks, you know, even though we got called out to rekey, but, but see this started about a year and a half or so ago, maybe a couple of years ago, they started coming in with these, what I call little bitty sheet metal screws, I guess, with no tip. And that's because this is so soft. They, I guess they've discovered over the years and I've, gone out where the fine threads won't hold because this tapped area right here is in such crap metal that the taps wallow out so they they switch to that who knows if that's a good idea or not nobody knows for sure whether it is a good idea until it's been used quite a bit but we can see the same thing still still using the slit open plugs and uh, they, they're just too much trouble. They're, they're, they're horrible to deal with. As a locksmith, you can certainly order these, and they certainly are cheap. But 
I would, I would highly advise that you stick with solid brass cylinders. Number one, those only come in like two keyways, Yale and Schlage. Whereas the solid brass cylinders will last a lot longer, obviously, because they're made out of solid brass and actually good metal. They won't corrode as quickly because they are made of brass and good metal. And uh, they also have the chamber holes drilled instead of cut through kind of like the other ones did so that is that one let's find another plug follower do we have another plug follower up here i don't have another plug follower let's go ahead take this out i mentioned this earlier drilled six pin chambered five again there's there's honestly there's really gonna be no real difference you know what actually i take that back this looks like actually good metal and the LSDA does look kind of crappier. Hmm. Hmm. Might be a good reason to switch. I wonder long term if if that would hold up. That's that's actually good metal compared to that. This is not the greatest. I mean, it's not it's better than that, but it's still something's just a bit different about that. So Something to take into account. Uh, none of them come with security pins. We can open it up and see. All the chambers are, are normal. There's no security pins. And if you're using a six pin key, you definitely need to take it apart and rekey it. So the last thing that comes up on that is, let's go ahead and put this back together and we will look at cylinder collars because these are used, you have to have cylinder collars to make these work on doors properly because when you screw them in there's going to be a gap so let's go ahead and put this here so when you screw them in number one when you're putting this on a door or you're taking it off or you get called out to reiki let's say this is already on a door you get called out to reiki and you loosen your screw a lot of people take these all the way out but you don't you don't have to do that you just have to back it out a little bit but you loosen this screw and then you go to unscrew the cylinder and it won't turn like, and you're like, what? So people take the rest of the way out. What happens is number one, it's just tightened down really hard or number two, these are tightened down. And when you tighten these down in the door, it sometimes binds the cylinder against the hole that's cut in the door for the cylinder. So when this is tight, the cylinder is bound up. So if you loosen, don't back out all, all the way, but just loosen the top and bottom screw, and then you'll find that the cylinder may come out easier and just don't forget to tighten it back when you put the cylinder back in. Uh, there are cylinder collars for those because once it's on the door, you're gonna have a, you're gonna be able to see the rest of the cylinder. So there's security collars and then there's regular collars and then there's aluminum collars and then there's steel collars. They sent me Oops, I'm putting in the wrong cylinder. They sent me a sample of their steel collar. So the one thing about steel collars is this one is a 532nd. So 532nd is a little short to be able to use for this application. Almost always you're gonna need to match the one inch cylinder so that when that's on there, you can't see, you can see, you can't see this part. That's kind of a good visual indicator. For the one inch cylinders, almost always you can get away with a quarter inch. Some people call it quarter inch. Some companies call it 732nd. Ilco makes three eighths. These are the, the two most common. So three eighths for inch and an eighth and quarter inch for one inch is kind of the standard, kind of kind of will work for most applications. So that's quarter inch and that would be your one inch cylinder. And this is about three eighths. This would work for your inch and an eighth cylinder. See how when they're leveled out, see how they're leveled out just like that. So that's that's kind of your your go-to sizes. There are security colanders, 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 colors available uh, for the outside and they come with what's called this wave washer, a steel 
collar and then the steel security collar. And what that does is it protects the outside. So when somebody clamps on something and tries to twist this out, it just spins freely. This makes it really hard to force open a cylinder. Uh, it's definitely an add-on. Comes in a pack of six from Kedex or a couple of other manufacturers. The wave washer that comes with this uh, gives you kind of the tightness. So see how it so it just gets it kind of tight. If you're using one of these security colanders, colanders, it's 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 good good idea to use the uh, the inch and an eighth cylinder for it, even if you're only using five pin, because it kind of just gives a little bit more leeway and and looks a little bit better. But that's it, it'll work fine with one inch as well. Only thing I'm not fine about is this causes it to rust. This wave washer right here causes all sorts of rust issues. And then it builds up on the inside of this. And the next thing you know, it starts messing around on the outside. These don't have, see, this is brand new and it's been riding around in my truck. So these things don't have the greatest finishes. They end up looking pretty bad after a while. I don't know if Global General makes a version of those, but the one they sent is, is steel. These are aluminum. There's a big price difference. You know, when you put this up to this finish, it looks much better. Well, let's put it up next to one without plastic on it. And that looks that looks much better, but that doesn't provide any real security. It's really just hiding, hiding that and providing the proper spacing. So some people don't like this. If they're real ticky, they may not like that. But retail-wise, you're talking about seven to ten dollars per cylinder versus three or four dollars per cylinder so oh uh, 90 percent of the time people are just don't care they just want it to work they don't care if it's got that slight mismatch if they do they would have to definitely upcharge for that i almost always only stock the aluminum but i do have a variety of other cylinders for situations where it needs it these really can't often be used this is a sergeant also abloy that comes with with uh, original style cylinders. Let me see how that works. But a lot of times, see how much bigger this ring is compared to this ring? So this can cause problems with the edge of the door when it closes because narrow style, narrow frame. If this is too big, it may hit and cause the door not to close all the way. So these are more specific to actual mortise locks, not necessarily narrow style mortise locks. Lastly, with mortise cylinders, they're also used with what's called lorry deadbolts, or Ilco, Ilco makes them now. Lorry deadbolts has a thing where you screw the cylinder in, you've got the latch, the cylinder screws in with the two shrouds, and it, it, they also come with spacer rings as well, and the wave washers. Let's see, it comes with little spacer rings right there. So... That is another reason to have, if you stock mortise cylinders in different keyways, which they're available in pretty much every keyway out there. If you can't find it in an aftermarket cylinder, it's going to be available in the original, like say Sargent oddball keyways or whatever the case is. But for the most part, Schlage Y1, uh, Sargent LS, uh, LSA, which is an Acme specific keyway, uh, Rust one, all those are available in L4 and L and D1s. All those are available in aftermarket cylinders, whether it be from General or whether it be from LSDA or even another company. I'm just showing you and we're just talking about narrow style mortise locks in general. Break into the video right now to say that right now, if you post a comment, if you are a locksmith, if you go out and provide locksmith service, I want to offer this to you. So go ahead and post a comment in the comment section that you are a locksmith and that will enter you in the giveaway. We're going to give away the, the general products that we just looked at, uh, a hook bolt from LSDA and another one inch cylinder. So this will provide you, whether you find if you get on a job and there's one broken, you can actually sell all of that for well over... 175 ish dollars easily so that is a chance for you to get some free product and also a chance for you to check out the differences for yourself so you can decide which one you like better but right now post a comment in the comment section this is not 
for the the lock picking crowd because I don't want to see this. This is this is something that a, a field locksmith in the U.S. So it's U.S. based, of course. Uh, that that you would need when you get called out and you have a broken Adams Wright style lock. So make sure and post a comment in the comment section if you are interested in winning that package. And we'll probably do the giveaway during our Saturday morning live whatever number it's coming up and i'm pretty sure that covers everything i can think of right now if i missed anything during the edit i'll either update it in a comment or post it while i'm editing this video but that is narrow style with the eye mortise locks mortise cylinders thumb turns and uh and pretty much everything i can think of about those so if you have any questions or comments on them i'm not saying choose one company over another showing you the difference i do like some of the features of the mortise cylinders including looks like a little bit better metal the only problem i've ever had with mortise cylinders from acme is that thumb turn freezing up because of the strong spring but i do like general's thumb turns better it's one of those cases where even if it's only you know 50 cents or a dollar off i don't know what the price difference is in them but as long as something's working for a company and lsda has worked fine for us uh, for decades now so it's just one of those things unless you have problems with a particular product you, there's no real reason to change on it so it's and it is what it is type of thing so again thanks for watching y'all make sure and hit that like button make sure and subscribe if you are interested in locksmith type stuff like this and we'll catch y'all next video